Well, the countdown says we're starting, so we're starting. Welcome to worship today, whether here in person or on the worldwide interweb or wherever you find yourself this morning, it is great to, uh, to be with you. Um, we're going to start off with a, with a song we haven't done here before. You may have heard it. Um, it's inspired by some of the words in Psalm 30, and so they call us to worship today. It says, sing to the Lord, you saints of his. Praise his holy name. So that sounds like an instruction, and we better do it. So in just a second, we're going to obey God's instruction to sing to the Lord. Then it goes on to say later on, You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. You might find yourself uh, thinking some of those same things, that God has done those things for you in the past and you're celebrating that today. Or maybe you're here today and you're still wailing and have sackcloth and you're not necessarily in that place where you feel like singing. That's okay. These words show us and tell us that God is in the business of redemption and he can turn uh, bad situations and use them for his good and for his glory. And so that is the God, the God of redemption that we serve today. Let's stand together and let's worship him as we sing Graves into Gardens. the world but it couldn't fill me to do with treasures of faith I'm not enough and then you came along This is a fail, guys. <laughs> Whoo! And you know, practice went with no problems whatsoever. So, which is why we're having problems now. We did it again. We will try this again, guys. We really will. We'll, we'll get that one together. Uh, <laughs> let me, uh, um, as we sing the next couple of songs, uh, we, you will have the opportunity to receive communion. 
Uh, usually we do that on the first Sunday of the month, and that is what we fi- where we find ourselves today. You'll see the elements here, the, the uh, bread and the juice, signifying the body and the blood of Jesus. Um, as we sing and as you feel uh, led, you can uh, make your way there, receive the elements right there, and there's a trash can right behind that half wall. You can uh, throw the, the remainder in, in there, um, and that's kind of the, the process. We've done that a couple of times now, so if you've been here before, you know the drill. Beyond the process, what we're here to, to, today to do is to celebrate Jesus, who he is and what he has done for us. And no better way to do that than to walk through the, uh, the sacrament of communion, to uh, receive the, the bread and the cup and remember again the sacrifice that, uh, that Jesus has made for us. So uh, as we prepare to do that and as we prepare our hearts, let's, uh, let's pray this morning. Father God, we thank you for the privilege of braiding you. I pray that as you receive the elements this morning and uh, recognize your grace that surpasses uh, that have we can make sure that, uh, that, that all is well between us and you and if there is anything Lord that we can fall upon your grace today that we can uh, be forgiven and restored And Lord, as we celebrate you, Lord, we pray that you would be the center and the focus of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Stop working. We make a miracle work a promise. 
the sound of his voice. Seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. of the sea.
may be seated. Let's pray together. Father God, we turn to you today, and there are certainly, no doubt, some who are gathered here in this place today or, or online through many, many things. The, uh, uh, the, the temptation it could be to, uh, to, to get angry about that or to question or to doubt. And Lord, I pray that, that you, can, you can cement in our souls today that, 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 that it can be well with us even as we go through it all. That uh, this can be focused on you, that our trust, our hope, our, 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 our very lives can be centered on who you are and what you are doing. That you are a redemptive God. That you make a way where there seems like there's no way. That it is a supernatural thing. And Lord, I just pray that you can bring your peace uh, and your grace to settle in on our hearts and lives today. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving. We think of family and pray for your hand upon them as they grieve the loss of, of Tony. Uh, Lord, we think of leaders as, as Greg had lost his father just yesterday. That, uh, that you would touch... Uh, touch the meter family and and uh, be with grieve as well lord there there are probably others and as we as we walk through uh this life we experience grief and lord you have promised to be with us as we walk through those times and so i pray that that we can uh keep our eyes on you i, I pray for those who are uh facing physical difficulties and uh and we pray for your healing touch we pray that you would Courage and, and empower that, that you can bring uh, your healing uh, supernaturally and, and through the, uh, the, the guidance of, of doctors. And, and Lord, we just, just pray for your anointing and for your grace in, in, the lives of, in our lives and in thy, those we know and love who, who are struggling physically. And Lord, we, we pray for your continued uh, touch upon us, even emotionally. And we, we uh, live in, in anxious days, and we live uh, facing things that, that we don't know a whole lot about, and that causes a lot of uh, fear and anxiety and, and depression. And Lord, I just pray that you would bring your healing uh, to our hearts as, and to those who are struggling with, with those issues, that you could bring, bring your wholeness, that they can trust you Lord, we think of our relationships, and, and Lord, I just pray that you would uh, bring your healing to broken or strained relationships, that we can do all that, that we need to do to bring, uh, bring reconciliation in those situations and circumstances, and we pray for your, your touch and for your healing there. Uh, Lord, so much, so much that we walk through. through uh, we, I pray that you will help us to continually remember that we need to walk through those things with you that we're holding on to your hand, that we're walking in step with your spirit, that, that you are the one who goes before us, uh, and you are the one who fills us, you are the one who protects us and carries us. Lord, I pray that, that uh, you would remind us of those truths today, that when we feel the things we feel as we face the difficult circumstances of life, that, that, that we could combat those feelings with, with the truth of who you are. And then we can recognize what, what, uh, what is real and true. Lord, I, I thank you for the mission that you've given each one church corporately to, to love people to life. And Lord, I pray that, that as we do that, as we, as we uh, live our lives each day in our, in our uh, homes and in our neighborhoods and at work and, and uh, even online in our interactions with folks, uh, Lord, I just pray that, that we can be uh, voices of life and love. And that we can introduce people to you and draw them uh, to you and to your grace and love. Lord, we, we thank you and we praise you that, that even in the midst of uh, circumstances that where we, we uh, don't necessarily know uh, where it's headed or what's going and things that seem to be changing all the time, Lord, you never change. And we can put our trust and our hope in you. Lord, we, we love you and we thank you for your presence here today. And we pray that you'll continue to, uh, to speak to us and to uh, motivate us to be the people that you desire us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, it is uh, great to be with you. I think, Tim, do we got a little uh, video in there? Uh, hit the, uh, the, the cue. Go ahead. Do it. Let's see. Oh, it is time. For Hope Squadron, that means kids, 
or if you consider yourself a kid and you just want to get out of church, no, don't do that. But uh, uh, it is time. Miss Zeta's in the back there, and you're heading out those back doors with her, and you're going to have an awesome time, I think, going to, uh, I don't know, other galaxies, probably. So uh, have a great time learning uh, about uh, God on your own level, uh, and we, uh, we thank you that you're here today. We got a crew. That's awesome. Well, I don't know that we have a whole lot of announcements, uh, but uh, we want to remind you and thank you all in the same breath for continuing to support uh, the Medina Church of the Nazarene with your generosity, and uh, we're, not, we're still not passing plates, but we have a uh, receptacle in the back there if you came prepared to uh, give this morning, and I encourage you to do that. Also, obviously, there are many ways that you can give uh, online. There's a, a way to text. You can work it, uh, just send it through the mail, all sorts of things, and we appreciate that. Bottom line is that we're not just giving to pay bills, right? We're giving uh, uh, in worship to God through, a, uh, through our local church, and so we thank you for your uh, faithfulness in that, and uh, and so uh, you can uh, you can you can do that after church if you didn't do it on your way in. Also, I forgot to say at the beginning, but we don't have the bulletins on your seats today like we've been doing. They're stacked in the back there, uh, and so if you didn't grab one uh, in just a second, there's a video plays. Maybe that's a good uh, time for you to grab that if you want to follow along with the with the sermon. Some of you play bingo, I think, on the back there, and try to give yourselves points if you guess the blanks ahead of time. I, I'm aware, I understand this, uh, but uh, so you wouldn't want to miss out on that, uh, that excitement. So uh, make sure you grab a bulletin if you didn't grab one. Uh, we are continuing our series here in just a moment on Proverbs and um, all that it has to say. And today, oh, today's a doozy. It's a good one. Um, I'll just leave it at that and we'll jump right in. So let's, uh, let's prepare for that this morning. Ever wonder why you feel the way you do? Ah! We'll get to know your emotions. When things go wrong, anger is there. This is anger. He will make sure the world knows anger is in control. But what you really need to watch out for is when he's out of control. Get to know all your emotions with Disney Pixar's Inside Out, rated PG. All right, that movie came out a few years ago. It gives you a little bit of a glimpse of where we're going today. I want to tell you the story. There was at one point in a t-ball game, the coach called one of his uh, young players over, and he asked, do you understand what cooperation is, what it means to be a team? And the, the little boy nodded and said he did. He said, uh, the coach said, do you understand uh, that what matters is whether we uh, play together as a team? It's not about any one individual. It's, it's whether we play together as a team. And the, the boy nodded. And he said, so, the, the coach goes on, he says, so, when a strike is called, or you're out at first, or, or, or you don't, uh, then, then you don't argue, you don't attack the umpire, you don't start yelling, you don't start cussing, uh, you, you, you understand all that? And the little boy said, yes. And the coach then said, good, now go over there and explain it to your mother. We could probably take the rest of the time this morning if I just ask you this one simple question. What makes you mad? You're just going to be thinking about that the rest of the day. Um, what makes you mad? We'd all probably answer that a little bit differently. Certainly things get under our skin, right? The th certain things annoy us, get us worked up. Maybe it's not t-ball, but, uh, but, but we've all been angry. We all get angry. Maybe you get mad when you get cut off in traffic. The term road rage officially entered the English dictionary in 1997. Before that, I guess everybody was all happy on the roads, but uh, in 1997, uh, we, uh, we coined the phrase road rage, and people get upset when they're behind the wheel. Um, some people uh, get angriest with the people that are closest to them. And so with a spouse or, or with their kids or, or another family member, uh, the, the most common calls to 911 I hear are, are domestic disputes. 
Uh, many things make us angry, usually when we, when we think we deserve better treatment. Uh, things should be different, and so we get mad. Uh, pandemics have a way of bringing out the ugly side of it. Maybe you haven't noticed that, I don't know. But maybe it, you know, things kind of get on our nerves maybe a little bit more. And, and, uh, and, and then the little things that would normally just be, oh, now we're in the middle of all this, and we, we react. And Today we're going to dig through the book of Proverbs again. Because it addresses this issue of anger quite a lot, actually. Uh, Believe it or not, there are wise ways and foolish ways to handle ourselves when we get mad. You probably already knew that because you've probably seen both. Uh, We all get mad, and and I think we need to be able to, uh, to admit that today. I know this is church, so we're not ever supposed to be angry, right? We're just supposed to, you know, stand around and hum a lot, maybe sing, sing a hymn or two. Uh, But, but, uh, and so, so a lot of times we think, well, getting mad isn't the Christian thing to do. But, but, but we all do it, uh, and 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 it's not right that that anger is is automatically sinful. Everyone gets angry. We've all been born with the capability for anger. It's given to us by God. We just need to know how to use it. Or how to control it. Psalm 4.4 tells us, in your anger do not sin. So right there we've got the, there's anger, but then there's an anger that leads to sin. The anger itself isn't sinful. Uh, Ephesians 4.27 talks about that as well and goes on to say that we need to settle our anger in a timely manner. Uh, Don't go to bed angry, it says. Uh, Jesus got angry. I don't know if you've read the passage where where he uh, uh, got a whip and started, uh, you know, Taken names, right? And uh, it cleaned up some stuff around the temple. Uh, it wasn't exactly, excuse me, could you please leave? He was, he, was, uh, he was upset. And multiple times in Scripture we see that God is angry when people don't listen or obey. So it appears, as I look through Scripture, anger in and of itself is not sin. But, uh, but why we're angry might be sinful and how we deal with or or allow our anger to lead us how we deal with that anger can lead us to sin as well and so most of the references about anger in scripture uh, speak of it in in negative terms Uh, at best it's uh, it's seen as something we need to be cautious of and and at worst it leads us to awful things like bitterness and rage and and revenge and even murder we see all of those throughout scripture and there are uh, uh, well Proverbs talks uh, a whole lot about it, and so we're going to be looking uh, all through the book of Proverbs today. But I, I think Proverbs twenty nine eleven kind of summarizes everything that King Solomon has to say about anger. Proverbs twenty nine eleven sim- simply says this: Fools give vent to their rage, but wise people keep themselves under control. Fools give vent to their rage. Wise people keep themselves under control. In other words, wise people control their anger. It is foolish to let your anger control you. I guess there's the the money phrase for the whole day. We're going to keep coming back to that uh, throughout uh, the the next few minutes. Uh, Wise people control their anger. It's foolish to let anger control you. In spelling that out, we can, we can look at Proverbs, and it, and it addresses several different ways that we allow anger to control us. One way is that we can get angry too easily. We get angry too easily. Proverbs uses the term quick-tempered or easily angered. Uh, chapter 14, verse 17, a quick-tempered person does foolish things. 1429, whoever is patient has great understanding, but one who is quick-tempered displays folly. 22, 24, and 25, uh, do not associate with one easily angered, or you may learn their ways and get yourself ensnared. Maybe you've heard the story of the, the guy who came to work limping one day, and one of his coworkers noticed that he was limping and asked him what was wrong, and he said, oh, it's an old hockey injury. And the, his coworker said, oh, I didn't know you played hockey. He said, I, I, I didn't ever play hockey. Um, last year, I was uh, watching my team uh, in the uh, Stanley Cup finals, and they lost, and I put my foot through the TV, and it acts up on occasion, he says. It's an old hockey injury. Uh, quick-tempered. Are you quick-tempered? Do do people have to walk on eggshells around you because they don't know what's going to set you off? The Bible says that that's foolish. It's a foolish way to handle our anger. The anger isn't necessarily uh, the bad thing, but how we handle it is the bad thing. It leads to all kinds of foolish things that we regret later. 
old cartoon, uh, Beetle Bailey. You remember Beater, Beetle Bailey? Maybe they're still doing that. I don't know. Uh, does anybody get the paper anymore? I used to only read the cartoon, the comics on Sunday mornings, right? Well, Beetle Bailey and Sarge, and they are always going at it. And uh, one, one cartoon, uh, Beetle Bailey steals Sarge's candy bar. And, and um, so Sarge comes after him, and he immediately starts kicking Beetle Bailey in the seat of the pants and saying, did you take this? Did you take And it finally, Beetle Bailey wears him down, and he says, okay, I took it. And he's, he's still kicking him in the seat of the pants. And he says, Where, where'd you put it? Where's my candy bar? And he said, I put it in my back pants pocket. So he was, anyway, reacting in anger causes more problems than it solves. We, we think we're dealing with the issue when we react in anger, right? Many times we're just making it worse. Uh, American journalist years ago, Ambrose Bierce, said it this way, Speak when you're angry and you will make the best speech you will ever regret. We will always regret it when we get angry too easily. Proverbs says, don't be quick-tempered. Proverbs also says another way that, that, that we, uh, we don't use our anger well is that we get angrier than we should. Uh, uh, Proverbs twenty nine twenty two: an angry person stirs up conflict and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Fifteen eighteen: a hot-tempered person starts fights, a cool-tempered person stops them. Nineteen nineteen: hot-tempered people must pay the penalty. If you rescue them once, you'll have to do it again. And twenty nine eleven: we read a minute ago, but fools give full vent to their rage. When Proverbs talks about foolish anger, most of the time uh, it uses the Hebrew word that, that uh, it, it can be translated anger, but it also has a connotation of heat and also the, the connotation of poison. And so it's a poisonous kind of emotion that gets us all hot under the collar and doesn't lead to anything good. Uh, I think Disney did a great job of depicting anger. We saw in that clip from Inside Out, uh, it read, always blowing fire out of his head, this hot-tempered person. We get angrier than we should. This uh, spring and summer, maybe it's a, maybe it's a quarantine thing, I've been uh, re Marvel superhero movies. I uh, still have a long way to go. It takes a while to watch those, but I've had fun kind of uh, seeing the plot lines that I missed and all sorts of things. It's been fun. But, but uh, one guy I, I hadn't really paid much attention to and don't really, uh, I don't know, I don't relate to him too much, but, but one guy is, uh, is the big green guy, right? The Incredible Hulk. And, uh, I mean, there's a guy with some anger issues, I think we could probably say, right? Uh, Bruce Banner is this genius physicist, but, but after a mishap, mishap with some gamma radiation, I mean, that's how, that's how all these things work, right? There's some kind of mishap in some lab somewhere, right? Well, uh, now whenever anybody upsets Dr. Banner, then he turns into that hulking green creature with superhuman capabilities. And in any of the movies that the Hulk is in, one thing that they're always dealing with at some point, part of the plot line has to do with either uh, uh, how to keep the Hulk calm so he doesn't go off at the wrong time, or how to calm him down after he's gone off so he can turn back to normal and shrink back down. The the Hulk is an example of someone who is hot-tempered. Uh, who is giving full vent to their rage. If you've ever seen any of those, those you see that, that, that it always leads to violence and destruction and even death and it never ends well. Now I'm assuming that none of you uh, turn green and develop superhuman capabilities when you get, ma- at, get mad. But I, I do know some people who act like monsters when they get mad, right? They get angrier than they should. I'm going to ask a question, and I'm assuming the answer is yes. Uh, have you ever flown off the handle or blown up, blown up at somebody? And uh, I would assume that for most of us the answer is yes. How many times after you reflected on that later that you were glad that you did it? Most of the time, at least for me, every time I've done that, I always think back and I'm embarrassed about it. And I regret what I said or how I said it or what I, what I did. I'm not sure that it ever solves the issue and almost always makes things worse. That's because not only do we get uh, angry too quickly and we get angrier than we should, but the reason, uh, the, the problem is that anger always has consequences. And Proverbs tells us a lot about that too. 
when we're quick-tempered or hot-tempered, there are some real consequences. 29, 22, a hot-tempered person commits many sins. 15, 18, a hot-tempered person starts fights. So we've got sins, we've got fights. Uh, 17, 1, uh, it's better to have a dry crust with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. That, that conflict and that, oh, that, that happens when, when we're, uh, we're living with, with anger. Uh, Proverbs 15, 1, a harsh word stirs up anger. Evangelist uh, years ago by the name of Billy Sunday. Maybe you've heard of Billy Sunday, but a lady come up, came up to him once uh, after one of his revival services and, and tried to rationalize her angry outbursts. And she described it, but she said, she said, there's nothing wrong with losing my temper. She said, I blow up and then it's all over. And Billy Sunday replied, well, so does a shotgun, and look at the damage that it leaves behind. Marcus Aurelius, Roman Empire, uh, once said so many years ago, how much more grievous are the consequences of anger than the causes of it? Anger can lead very quickly to sin. It causes violence, quarrels, it breaks relationships, and it eats us up inside as well. Uh, Friedrich Buchner, a uh, Christian author and, and minister, once wrote this, of the seven deadly sins, anger is possibly the most fun. We could stop right there and just uh, turn the sermon completely different direction, right? Uh, it's probably the most fun to lick your wounds, to smack your lips over grievances long past, to roll over your tongue the prospect of bitter confrontation still to come, to savor the last toothsome morsel, both the pain you are given and the pain you're giving back. In many ways, it is a feast fit for a king. The chief drawback is that what you are wolfing down is yourself. The skeleton at the feast is you. Fun or not, anger causes damage because as Dr. Dan Boone writes, uh, anger is like acid in a plastic jug. It destroys its container first. Wise people, Proverbs says, wise people control their anger. It's foolish to let anger control you because we get angrier than we should and we get angry too easily and those things cause consequences and that's foolish. When, when Proverbs talks about fools or foolishness, uh, I, I told you uh, when we first started this series that, that you know, we think of foolishness and we just think of maybe ignorance or that's just dumb to do. Uh, Proverbs, though, has this connotation, as it, its word for foolish has this connotation of sinful, too, that there's a, there's a sinful or a wicked or an evil element to it, that it's not just dumb to do, but that it's sinful to do. And, and, and then it also has this connotation of, uh, of immaturity, that... Um, that, uh, that, that anger, uh, or, or that, that anyone who's foolish, is, uh, is immature. In applying that to anger, uh, I, I want us to think about a, uh, a baby. There's, uh, there's not a whole lot of nuance when we think about anger uh, and, and things that upset uh, a little baby. You've, you've, got, you've got this, uh, uh, you know, they're hungry, or they're wet, or they're hurt in some way, and uh, it can turn into a lot of anger really quickly, Right? Um, full on tears, full on screaming, and if they if they get what they need, then it's all good again. But but uh, but it's it's this zero to one hundred and sixty, right? Because ah, there's just no nuance to it, and I just rage, right? Babies are in an infantile state. Their ability to deal with anger has not been developed or regulated. It's it's immature. People who haven't developed the ability to control their anger or deal with it are dealing with anger in an immature way. It's foolish. As one saying goes, command your temper lest it command you. Psychologist and author Dr. Henry Cloud puts it this way, an immature person asks life to meet their demands. The mature person meets the demands of life. So if I'm, if I'm uh, immature, then I just need my way and life needs to give me everything I want. And if not, I get mad about it. But, but uh, the mature person meets life, uh, the demands of life, uh, and, and goes at it that way, not demanding things for themselves. So if we get angry to eat too quickly, and, or if we get too angry, it causes all sorts of problems. So that's the problem, I guess. We, we do that. What are we supposed to do with that? How should we respond when we get mad? I mean, I could get mad right now that the computer's turned off, right? I, and you, you could get mad for saying, what in the world is going... How should we respond? I, I, 
Well, here's the thing, and, and from what I read, and even in talking with my, uh, my counselor wife, um, uh, anger is an emotion. It, it's a lot like uh, you've, you've got a dashboard, a light on a dashboard, and it's just telling you that something's wrong. It's, it's just warning. It's just saying, hey, there's, there's this thing going on. And it's a signal that something is wrong. It's, it's an emotion. It's just a signal that something's wrong. And now, that something wrong could very well be something that you need to deal with. It could very well be injustice in the world, right? It, it could be sin or, or, or pain or, or problems that we need to fight against. It's good to be angry over evil and injustice. It, it, it's good to be upset over things that upset God. A uh, hundred years ago, author uh, Bede Jarrett wrote, The world needs anger. The world often continues to allow evil because it isn't angry enough. So sometimes we don't get angry. You know, this is the kind of anger that, that we see God using in Scripture. It's, it's what Jesus had when he cleansed the temple and, and wielded that whip around. Uh, sin in the temple system was what was wrong, and, and Jesus was angry about it, and he, and he acted out in anger. We should be angry when, when people and systems go against God and his principles. Uh, we need to let our anger burn against uh, uh, injustice. We need to let our anger burn against those who are trafficking people for profit. We need to be angry about injustice. We need to get mad when people are abused or, or mistreated. We, don't need to, we, we can't sweep evil under the carpet and let it go unchallenged. Uh, British states, statesman and philosopher Edmund Burke wrote years ago, and you've probably heard, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. We need to let our anger motivate us to action against evil. So when the light goes on and you're angry and we, we recognize, well, what am I angry about? Well, I'm angry about this injustice and this, this problem. And, and so I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to use that anger constructively to bring about good and to go against evil. But when anger signals us it could very well be that the thing that is wrong isn't a noble cause at all. Instead, it's just my own selfishness and immaturity. Dr. Matthew Townsend uh, uh, says we need to ask ourselves if our anger is justified or if, it's, if I just want my own way. Am I, am I justified in this or do, do I just want what I want? Am I, am I mad that I'm not getting what I want? Uh, the American Psychological Association has on their website this, this quote, the underlying message of highly angry people is that things ought to go my way. And that is a foolish, immature way to deal with life. And most of the time that leads us to be quick-tempered or tempered and ends in all sorts of negative consequences. So we need to evaluate our own anger by asking why. Why am I angry? That light goes off on the dashboard. Okay, I'm mad. I'm feeling mad. What am I mad about? Is it, is it that I need to stand up on the side of righteousness and justice for the cause of the oppressed and the powerless? Or is it that I didn't get quick service at the restaurant on Friday night? Uh, do, I, do I have holy anger over moral decay in our world? Or am I flying off the handle again because the dog went on the newly cleaned carpet? Here's a quote. The size of the person can be measured by the size of the thing that makes them angry. Let your anger signal you to ask why. So the light goes on on the dashboard. I'm angry. Why am I angry? Am I angry about something that I need to combat and that's, that's uh, an injustice in the world? Or am I angry uh, due to uh, selfishness that I need to... So, so I'm asking why and then I need to do something about it. Because here's another secret about anger. Maybe it's not secret, but I think a lot of us get tripped up here. Especially in the church, I think. Because we have this negative connotation of anger, so then we suppress our anger. But suppressing anger can be just as destructive as giving full vent to it. So some people fly off the handle, other people stuff it, and it starts doing all sorts of things down inside when we don't do anything with it. Many people have the idea that all anger is wrong, and when they feel it, then, oh, i got to stuff that down and ignore it. And instead of asking why, we, we don't ask anything at all. We just ignore it. Well, that's, that must be wrong. I'm not going to even feel that, and I'm going to push it away. There are serious consequences that come from stuffing 
our anger. We, we hold on to bitterness. We harbor grudges. We, we pretend that all is well in a relationship, and that can bring emotional, psychological, and even physical problems. It can cause high blood pressure and sleeplessness and, and stomach problems and headaches and all the rest. The, the stress and anxiety of, of ignoring our anger is a problem. So when we're angry, we need to recognize it. We need to feel it, but then we need to use it well. Let it motivate action. Anger, anger shouldn't last forever. Either you realize it's unhealthy and you take steps to change your behavior, or you realize that it's justified and you take steps to confront what needs to be changed. Ephesians 4 instructs us not to let the sun go down on our anger, or else we'll be giving the devil a foothold in our lives. In other words, deal with things in a timely way instead of letting them fester inside. So many consequences can be avoided if we would let our anger motivate action instead of holding on to it indefinitely. Remember, wise people control their anger. It's foolish to let anger control you. And in suppressing it, it's still controlling us. So so how do we control our anger? Proverbs tells us that too. It doesn't just highlight the problem. It tells us what the solution is. Uh, it's easier said than done, and it takes more than just, just learning behaviors. A lot of times, if you, if you would go to a, uh, an anger management class, they might teach you to, to breathe deeply or to count to 10 before you respond. or do all, And all those things are fine and, and good, but, but, uh, but the, the, the fundamental way to deal with these issues, Proverbs tells us, is that it's an issue of character development. Proverbs 15.1, a gentle ang- answer turns away wrath. 1911, a person's wisdom yields patience. It is, to one's gl- it's, it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. 1012, hatred stirs up conflict, but love covers over all wrongs. 1518, a hot-tempered person stirs up conflict, but the one who is patient calms a quarrel. Those verses tell us that the answer to foolish anger are things like love. And patience and gentleness. Those aren't emotions. Those are character qualities. And those character qualities, we're told in Scripture, come straight from the Holy Spirit Himself. They're part of the big list in Galatians chapter 5, right? The fruit of the Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control. They're, they're not emotions that come and go. They are traits that, are, that transform us as we allow the Spirit to change us from the inside out. He changes our character. And that helps determine how we respond when things make us angry. Anger is an emotion. It's a signal that tells us something's wrong. God develops his holy, ang- holy character in us so that when, when we realize that something's wa- wrong, we'll respond with his character, love, patience, gentleness. Dr. Dan Boone uh, wrote, a, wrote a great little book. Uh, he's a um, college president and uh, theologian, Church of the Nazarene. He wrote a great little book on the seven deadly sins. And at one point he refers to, obviously, one of the, uh, one of the seven deadly sins uh, is, uh, is wrath or anger. And uh, in that chapter, he refers to a scene from the movie Forrest Gump. Maybe you've seen that. Maybe uh, Tim, do we have video capability? Don't start it yet. Don't start it yet. But I didn't want to lead up to it if it wasn't there. Uh, so Dan Boone, he wrote, wrote this as he talked about this clip from Forrest Gump. He says, Forrest Gump loved Jenny. From childhood, they were bound in friendship. Jenny's father abused her. She took her anger inward and almost destroyed her life. Drugs, alcohol, running, hiding, letting anyone use her body. She came to the brink of suicide, but Forrest loved her. One day, as a seeking adult, she returned home. She walked down the road to her old house, long since emptied by the death of her father, and the anger that she had turned inward suddenly erupted. Let's watch that clip.
sometimes I guess there just aren't enough rocks. In that moment, Jenny's life began again as she dealt with the anger that had been so destructive. Dr. Boone continues in his book, he says, God painfully watches our attempt to resolve our anger as we throw rocks at others or we stone ourselves. God stands ready at any moment to take us up in divine arms, recognize the pain done to us, receive the raw anger into himself, and redeem it for good. Anger is a signal that something is wrong. Unchecked, it causes significant damage to ourselves and to others. God wants to develop his character in us so that when anger comes, instead of reacting, we can respond. Respond with his love, with his patience, with his gentleness as proverbs tells us over and over again wise people control their anger it is foolish to let anger control you will you stand with me let's bow our heads and pray topic of anger it's real close one lot and it probably takes more than 25 minutes of a speech in a constructive way. And so I pray, Lord, that, that you will continue to, uh, to, to hound us with the message of, of Proverbs on the issues of anger. Lord, there may be some here today who, who are struggling with, with getting quick-tempered. And they just get, get angry too easily. Lord, I, I pray that you can bring your love and your gentleness and your patience and develop those things in their hearts. I pray for openness that we can be open to your spirit to develop those things within us. Lord, there, there may be some who, who just get too angry too often. Lord, I pray again, character inside of us. Help us to see the, the negative consequences that come when we allow our anger to control us. Help us to recognize how we can open ourselves to your spirit to allow you to control us and to change us and, and to create your character within us so that we can respond in, uh, in, in, in constructive ways. Lord, there's so much in this world to, be, uh, to, to, to fight against. Things of, of evil and wickedness and injustice. And, and Lord, I pray that, that you would give us the courage to stand up against those things. That we could follow your leadership. And still do it in a way of love and gentleness and patience. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to evaluate when the anger comes. And we know it will. That's how you've made us. That we can check and see what really is wrong. And that we can deal with those things responsibly, uh, maturely, wisely. Lord, we thank you that, that you don't leave us alone, but that you walk uh, through this life with us and even within us. And so, Lord, I pray that as we go from here, that you will transform us and, and that we won't be people who are controlled by anger, but that we are controlled by the Holy Spirit. Father God, we love you. We thank you for the chance to be with you and with your people today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.